Welcome to the Dolphin Project. This project was an adventure from start to finish. It took about one year to complete and there were many tedious hours and lots of caring people that devoted time to make sure that this project was done to perfection and completed. Please sit back and enjoy the journey. This all began with a phone call from Tom French, head of the Department of Fisheries in Massachusetts. He called and asked if I would be interested in getting a dolphin to dissect and articulate the skeleton. I had been waiting for a small whale and of course jumped at the chance. Being a science teacher, this was very exciting. So I called the rest of my colleagues and others that would be interested and we went the very next day down to Sandwich to collect our prize. Believe me, this is a day I will never forget. January 9, 2002 was a freezing, snowy, sleeting day. We were all so excited. Along with it being so cold, it was at the end of the day, so it was getting dark. And we had to walk about a mile and a half down the beach to collect our prize. There was no access to the beach by car. When we finally got down to the end of the beach and saw the dolphin, we had to figure out how to get the dolphin back down the beach. Tom, always being prepared for any situation, brought a tarp and a rope. We rolled the dolphin in and started the human Iditarod back down the beach, and it was a long walk back, pulling dead weight. When we got to back down, we had to haul it up a flight of stairs into the back of a truck, drive back to Weymouth, and ice it down for the night. A very long day. The type of dolphin was a common dolphin. She weighed about 180 pounds and it was a female and about six feet long. Before we put the dolphin into the tarp, we decided to cut off the extra tendrils that were hanging out. How it died, I do not know. But while it was on the beach, an animal had started to pick at it. There we are, once again, getting the human Iditarod all set to go. This was on Saturday. There I am holding the prize, a piece of the dolphin. We had worked on it on Friday night and on, and on Saturday doing the dissection. There is Melissa, and Melissa is working, holding back, using a meat hook, pulling it back so somebody can take and carve away the flesh. There is lots and lots of blubber in a whale. These kids volunteered their time on a Friday night and a Saturday. They are all future vets. The man on the left is Dave Taylor. He came down from the North Shore to show us how to start the procedure of cutting away a dolphin. Dave had done several and he wanted to make sure that we found the vestigial pelvic bones down near the back because those bones prove that the whale was once a land animal. The blood, the red color is lots of myoglobin. It allows oxygen to be stored and contains iron. That is the whole vertebra right there. Here is uh, one of the high school students and what he is doing is he is going in between each rib and cutting away all of the flesh. Melissa and I are there and we are pulling out the brains out of the whale. Remember, we're taking off all of the flesh, getting off as much excess flesh as we can before we put this whale into the horse manure for the microbes to finish cleaning it. There we are in September, back to school, back to our very own big dig. Now it is time to dig up the dolphin and start to articulate the skeleton. We, When we buried it, we had put uh, some of the smaller bones into onion bags and we had run a rod right through 
the vertebra of the whale, trying to keep things in order as much as possible so it would be easier to articulate the skeleton. Believe me, it helped. There is the skull coming out of the manure pile, and when it was put in, the teeth were all in the skull. So we took out all of the teeth, we put it into a piece of floral foam in order, and it's all marked so that all the teeth can be cleaned, the skull can be cleaned, and once everything is cleaned, the teeth are going to be glued back into the skull. Is Peter and Ricky out on the lawn. All of those bones had to be cleaned. They were all put into a, into a solution of ammonia and water for a couple of days. Then after that, we had to scrub all the residue off of it. Then we had to put it into a solution of hydrogen peroxide and water to bleach them out. There wasn't a bottle of hydrogen peroxide left on the South Shore. We used so much of it to clean the dolphin. After everything was all cleaned, we had to paint every single bone with a wood preservative. Then Melissa, before the bones were even painted, Melissa took and wrote the federal permit number on each bone. Every bone had to be numbered with this special federal ID. Christina, having a dad that had all the right tools, took us down to his workshop and we used the drill press to drill through each vertebra so we were able to put a steel rod through it. The flipper. This is a picture of the flipper, an x-ray. An x-ray was taken of the flipper before it was put into the onion bag into the pile of manure. So when we collected the pile of bones, we took the x-ray, put it on top of a box, made a light box, had a piece of plexiglass cut in the shape of a flipper, and then um, put the bones on and just followed it. it was, that was very easy to do. We lost a couple of bones, and there's Linda back at the Weymouth, Egypt, uh, digging through the pile. This was our very own big dig. Christina is now putting in every single tooth into the skull. The skull. The skull, the vertebra. Everything is just about done. We have worked so hard on this vertebra, I can't tell you how many times that we thought we had this done, we took it out, we went to put it all together, and one, one vertebra would be out of order. So it would all have to come off and all be put back on again. Very tedious. Laurel's husband, Bob, he is putting in silicone in between each vertebra to hold them in place. Ricky and Laurel, we are sitting there. Bob drilled holes in some of the vertebra where the ribs would be attached. We have little pins in each one of the ribs. We're sticking it into the vertebra. After we did that whole process, we stood it up. It looked amazing. But we took it apart because it would have been too hard to transport with the ribs on. So we left the pins in it and this way we can have kids come up and assemble the ribs onto the dolphin skeleton. There I am just looking in amazement thinking, oh, it's finally coming to an end. And here it is on Laurel and Bob's dining room table. Bob made the stand for it, and there she is, and he cut out a plexiglass flipper for the, a plexiglass fluke for the end of the tail.